Hello friends. In continuation to our series of talks on diagnosis making of male bladder outflow obstruction, wherein in my former video I told you that there can be a functional reason for having obstruction to bladder outlet or there can be a structural reason where there is a gross disease. So out of these two, in the present video, I shall be focusing only on the functional disorders which result in bladder outflow obstruction. As you know, bladder has two sphincters in its outlet. So if you have any dysfunction in these sphincters, the bladder gets affected and you get a myriad of problems. The clinical presentations resulting from the functional obstruction can be either an overt, uncomplicated kind of uh, presentation where the patient will have typical storage and voiding symptoms. On the contrary, there are patients who present at a very late stage because they are diagnosed very late and they present with complications such as urosepsis, bilateral hyperuretonephrosis with or without renal failure. Friends, equally common is to have what I call as cryptic presentation of functional blood outflow obstruction in females where these females present as recurrent urinary infection or incontinence. So if you have patients presenting to you in any of these three formats, you have to make a diagnosis. So let me give you some examples, first of all, of functional female blood outflow obstruction. Here is a case one who is a 32 year old lady and she comes to you with storage symptoms, frequency, urgency, nocturia, voiding symptoms, straining, slow stream, intermittency and terminal dribble and also some post void symptoms like a feeling of incomplete empty. So such is the clinical presentation and in initial evaluation, when you take a urophometry, this is the kind of the graph, a kind of a compressive pattern where there is a low Q max and prolonged maturation time. When you ask for an ultrasound, it shows you significant post void residual urinary volume. So here you have a clinical suspicion that patient may be having functional bladder neck obstruction. You ask for an MCU. This is a typical picture of voiding cystoethogram where when patient is voiding, the bladder neck does not open and contrast is trickling down in the urethra of the patient. So you see a very thin urethra. So obviously your clinical diagnosis of bladder neck obstruction is getting more ground. Then in subsequent evaluation, we should do a test called urethral calibration either by a Foley catheter number 14 or by a Hagar dilator, which will show you a patent nice compliant urethra. So then you are coming closer to your diagnosis of bladder neck obstruction. And then you do a urodynamic evaluation. As you can see here, which shows you very high pressure voiding with low flow. This patient is given Cyrodocin for a month and this is as a test case. When you give her Cyrodocin, the Euroflow from before Cyrodocin to after Cyrodocin, you obviously notice there is some improvement in her voiding symptoms. So friends, that is how you arrive at a diagnosis of primary bladder neck obstruction. So if I sum up for you and tell you the sequence of the test that you may be required to do. Firstly, a patient who has obstructive low unit tract symptoms on Euroflow shows a low Q max and prolonged voiding time. On ultrasound shows you significant post void residual urinary volume, sometimes with bladder thickening. Voiding cystogram shows you narrow bladder neck. The calibration of urethra is normal. The urodynamic test 
showing you high pressure voiding and then this patient shows you a positive response to alpha blockers. So if you have this kind of a sequence, you will make a diagnosis of primary bladder nerve obstruction in a female. Another case, who is 36 year old female, she gives you complaints of storage symptoms like frequency, urgency. In the voiding symptoms, her main symptom is intermittency. And then she also has feeling of incomplete empty. Looks similar to the previous case. But then when you do a uniformity test here, this is the kind of a graph that you get. Interrupted flow. Flow comes, stops, flow comes and stops. And if you recall our conversation on uniformity, this kind of a graph is called staccato pattern. And this is typical of dysfunctional voiders. Here on ultrasound, you will see usually large post void presley urinary volume. And because this disease is a little long standing in this patient, they often develop bilateral hydroureteronephrosis also. But this is not essential. When you perform a voiding cystogram, the bladder neck opens nicely, urethra fills up nicely, but there's sudden cut off at the level of the sphincter, which is trying to obstruct the urinary flow. And the calibration test is normal because this external sphincter is compliant. It is hypercontractile, but it is compliant. And when you do a urodynamic study of these patients, again, you will notice a high pressure, low flow widening. Now here again, you are making a diagnosis of dysfunctional widening. Here, the seat of a functional problem is at the level of external sphincter. And how it is different from bladder neck, patient has obstructive low urinary tract symptoms. Uroflometry shows staccato pattern. Ultrasound shows significant post void residual urinary volume with or without back pressure changes on kidneys. Voiding cystogram shows you narrow distal urethra at the level of external sphincter. The calibration of urethra is normal. The urodynamic study will show you high pressure voiding. But in this patient, because seat of the problem is at external sphincter, she will not have any response to the alpha blockers. The third case, again a young lady who comes with dominant symptoms of storage, frequency, urgency and urgent continence. Voiding symptoms, main symptom is slow stream. And then she has incomplete micturition. This patient, in addition to this set of low urinary tract symptoms, has a history of cervical spine injury, which initially led to quadriparesis, but now that quadriparesis has significantly recovered. When a uniformity test is done, it also shows you low Qmax and prolonged voiding time. The ultrasound shows you a variable degree of post void presley urinary volume and uh, when you do an MCU, it shows you a urethra which is suddenly dilating and as you continue your voiding cystogram, you notice urethral dilatation is like a ballooning of the urethra. This deformity of urethra is known as a spinning top kind of appearance. If you look at this picture, where you have two sphincters visible here, internal sphincter and external sphincter. And when the bladder contracts to void, internal sphincter open, but external sphincter does not open. So it will result in high pressure voiding. So you have here in this patient, a non-relaxing external sphincter, which results into significant dilatation of the urethra, which I call spinning top appearance. So this kind of a problem, which is known as detrusor sphincter dysenergia, happens because of a neurological disease at a particular spinal level. If you classify the seat of origin, we call it supracontine, 
स्पाइनल वेयर इंफ्रापोन्टाइन एंड सुप्रासेक्रल और सेक्रल एंड इंफ्रासेक्रल सो दीज आर थ्री लेवल्स ऑफ ओरिजिन और थ्री लेवल्स वेयर द डिजीज इज देयर विच मैनिफेस्ट एज न्यूरोजेनिक ब्लैडर वेन एवर यू हैव अ डिजीज इन द मिडिल पार्ट द स्पाइनल इंफ्रापोन्टाइन एंड सुप्रासेक्रल यू गेट दिस काइंड ऑफ अबनॉमेलिटी विच इज दिस वन डेट्रोजर स्ट्रिंगटर डिसाइनर्जिया in this patient when you perform a urodynamic evaluation this is the kind of a graph that you get in the filling phase the emg showing you the relaxed sphincter bladder is filling up and in the voiding phase as voiding starts a very high pressure is reached and you can see rise of contractile activity in the sphincter so this is what is high pressure low flow and this low flow is because of resistance at the level of sphincter which is instead of relaxing is contracting this diagnosis is detrusor sphincter dysenergia so summarizing you again what do you need for arriving at such a diagnosis typical obstructive and storage symptoms low q max and prolonged time in uroflometry ultrasound showing you significant post void residual urinary volume the voiding cystrethrogram showing you spinning top kind of urethra on calibration you find urethra is normal and supple the urodynamic study will show you high pressure voiding with low q max and in the filling phase it will show you over activity and when you give these patients a trial of alpha blockers there is no response in this patient you must have a causative intrapontine suprasacral neurological disease then only you will call this name detrusor sphincter dysenergia so friends if i sum up for you a functional bladderic obstruction condition a very common condition is bladderic obstruction second is a dysfunctional voiding where the external sphincter is not relaxing appropriately but there is no neurological disease it's purely psychogenic basis or some problem in the local reflex action in the bladder and sphincter or the third is a detrusor sphincter dysenergia where you have a manifest clinically visible neurological disease i hope you found this information simple and useful for making an understanding of functional female bladder outflow obstruction thank you very much for your time in case you have any question or comments please write on my email thank you